Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this very special review of a modern game on the Red Pro Asylum. So we normally don't review modern games, of course, because we are the, the Red Pro Asylum. We dive into old games on old 8 and 16-bit platforms and, and the likes. But uh, today we are bringing you a review of Hank Nieborg's new game called Battle Axe. So Hank Nieborg is a man that uh, we know very well at the, the Retro Asylum, of course, because of his great work on on old games like Lionheart, Flink, uh, The Adventures of Lomax, and, and so on and so forth. So this guy is a, an extremely talented game designer and graphics artist. So he's been working within the industry since uh, 89, and uh, he's still working today. Of course, he just released Battle Axe, uh, which was a, a Kickstarter game. And he's been working on brilliant games like uh, Shantae, Risky's Revenge, or Mighty Switch Force, and well, Xeno Crisis, and uh, Gunlord, for example. Great, great games, and he's had, he's had a great career within uh, the gaming industry. And he is, first and foremost, a very talented pixel artist. And this is what he's showing off here, and that's why we thought it would be suitable for viewers of the Retro Asylum's YouTube channel to actually do a review of this, because this game is a great homage to the old classic games like, well, I guess like Golden Axe and uh, Gauntlet, for example, here. So, uh, without further ado, let's dive into the game. The story of Battle Axe is quite simple. For as long as you and your people can remember, your homeland of Mercia has been held in the tyrannical grip of Ethelred, a despotic sorceress who resides in a seemingly impenetrable tower in the distant icy wastelands to the north. Every seven years she sends her armies south to handpick inhabitants from each township who will be subjected to a life of slavery and they're never heard from again. So of course you are one of three heroes who are sent out to stop her. You can do this on your own or you can do it in the multiplayer mode, two of you uh, each picking one of the, uh, the three champions and then just hacking and slashing your way until you reach Ethered. So I've actually never reached her myself, I'm getting quite close I feel because I'm far into the fourth stage, but uh, let's get into the game proper, shall we? So when you begin the game, you need to choose between three different characters with three different character sets. So each character has a ranged attack, a, um, a weapon attack, normal attack, and uh, some kind of charge attack as well. So you can pick uh, the pirate, Rooney, so with the big red beard. He's a, a pirate who carries this, this the cannon on his shoulder and he'll use the cannon itself as his weapon so he'll bash the, the enemies with his cannon. And of course uh, he'll be shooting uh, cannonballs, that's his projectile attack. And his ability is to charge into the, the attackers so, or, or the, the monsters and that, that simply just kills him, that's a very powerful attack. These uh, abilities, special abilities need to uh, to kind of charge up again after you've used them. So you have to wait a little, you can do one charge attack and you wait until your entire sprite just just blinks for a, a split second and then you, you know that you're ready to use the charge attack again. Um, he's uh, he's kind of slow, slow-ish, he's uh, like the mid level in, in speed, but he's quite strong so he, he can bash some enemies quite easily. There's also a, uh, a female dark elf called Faye. Uh, who, whose weapon are these these twin blades? So she, she's got a quite a long range, I feel. So she's a, a bit easier to to do a lot of damage with. Not, she doesn't do as much damage as Rooney because she's not as strong. But seeing as you have a slot, la, slightly better reach, it's it's still quite. She's she's uh, very very good for uh, hacking, hacking and slashing. So her ability is this dash that it works pretty much like Rooney's uh, charge attack. And uh, her projectile weapon is that she can throw a dagger. She can only throw a dagger quite slowly though, I mean, especially uh, she can only throw one dagger at a time. So if you're aiming at something that's far away, you'll be, be firing quite slowly. Whereas Rooney can fire quite, quite quickly with his cannonballs there. The final character is Yolo, who is a, this tiny little man with a huge beard who's a wizard. And he has his weapon is his staff that he'll just uh, well actually it looks as if he's using his staff and his beard to to beat the enemies, 
and uh, he shoots fireballs with the stuff as well so that's his projectile attack that projectile attack is very very powerful so when you're playing as yolo you'll probably be want to play wanting to play this as pretty much a shoot em up just shoot everything on screen his special ability is that he can teleport from one place to the other uh, and as far as i can tell that doesn't actually hurt any of the monsters even if you teleport right through them so he, that's just to get him out of the harm's way then you can shoot some more fireballs He's quite slow and he's quite uh, well weak as well. He's not so strong, so he's very strong with his with his projectile attack. So use him as you would it in, in a shoot him up. So my personal favorite is actually Faye. I like her slightly longer reach. I like her speed, and uh, yeah, she's she's just a badass character to play with. Um, every single level is is ended up with a, a boss fight. And, and lots and lots of monsters you meet along the way and there are villagers that have been uh, kidnapped that you need to rescue and you need to learn how to defeat the different kinds of enemies and, and this is where this game gets uh, fun because this is a classic arcade brawler it's it, you can feel yourself getting better for every single time you play it you can uh, feel yourself getting better when you learn the different levels, when you learn to know where the traps are, where the, the fire breathing, uh, fire breathing uh, dragon heads are, for example. As soon as you learn the level layout and you learn which enemies to expect and you learn how to how to actually beat these different kinds of enemies, you can feel yourself be just getting better and better at this game. So Im immediately when I played this game, I died in the very first level at the first boss fight. And, uh, after a few goes, I figured out how to how to beat him, and went on to the next level. After a few goes, I figured out how to beat that level as well, and and so on and so forth. This is just brilliant arcade game design. And there are no credits here, so when you're dead, you're dead. You need to start over, and uh, that's actually actually a good thing in a game like this because that just means it's the, the gameplay loop is so satisfying. So you want to play it multiple times. You want to be getting better and better while looking at these stunning graphics and listening to this great soundtrack so everything just comes together to work to make this perfect arcade gaming experience if you ask me if you want to practice it a bit if you want to practice the levels play it in multiplayer because when you're playing two players <coughs> you're playing the same levels and you're playing the same amount of monsters so the game actually just gets easier that's good fun to train like that the game has some huge boss fights that you'll enjoy quite quickly. I mean, uh, just just have a look at these. So, so here we see the, the the boss fight from the first level, and the boss from the second level here. This is the third level boss, and the fourth level boss I've never reached yet. So I'm really looking forward to it. I think the fourth level boss may actually be that the uh, sorceress. But I'm not sure yet, and I don't want to spoil this for myself, so I haven't haven't uh, actually looked it up anywhere on the internet yet, just yet. So if you're playing this and you want to have it uh, look like an old game, there's actually a CRT filter you can uh, enable, and I, I quite like uh, playing with that. Normally I'm not into using those uh, filters that make it look as if you're playing it on a CRT, but in this in instance it actually looks really good on a, on a large flat screen TV. So if you're feeling nostalgic, go in and uh, enable that. I'll show you here how it looks, and then, uh, yeah, well, it just, uh, it doesn't look like a CRT really does it, but uh, it, it gives it that old school look anyway. So guys and girls, as you've probably already been able to, to tell by the way I've been talking about this game, I am very much in love with this. Uh, every year, it seems that there is one game that, that sucks me in completely, and I can't put it down before I've been, I beat it. Um, last year for me that was Dead Cells, early years have been stuff like uh, Shovel Knight for example, but this time it's Battle Axe. I'm totally in love with this game, I, I, I need to learn how to get all the way through it. I've already spent far too many hours playing it and I will continue until I can beat it on that single credit that you have. Actually, there is a challenge, uh, a sweet achievement there. If you can beat it without dying at all, you get that the, the ultimate achievement. I may not be going for that, but I definitely want to be able to beat it on that single credit you have. 
So that was it for me for this time. I hope you enjoyed this little review of Battleaxe. Battleaxe is out today on the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and on Steam, and so on and so forth. So if you're into your uh, rock hard arcade like games and you like this beautiful graphic style that Hank Nebok has done here, please go uh, go pick it up, go check it out. It was uh, kickstarted, so uh, lots of. Um, fun little nods to our community. I, I've uh, seen quite a few villagers with names that I can recognize from, uh, from different Discord forums and so on and so forth in the retro community. So go check that out yourself if you're interested. This is Mass from the Retro Island, signing off. <laughs>